Excellent Chemistry students, Dr. Tellis here for our next section. You will be able to write balanced equations for nuclear reactions using alpha, beta, gamma, and positron emission, electron capture, and fission, and recognize that radioactive isotopes decay by a series of nuclear reactions called a radioactive decay series, eventually ending with a stable isotope. Here's a couple of examples looking at radium-226 decay chain. We have an alpha decay, an alpha decay, an alpha decay, then a beta, a beta, then an alpha, then a beta, a beta, an alpha, and then we have a stable isotope. Here's looking at balancing nuclear equations, looking at the left and the right and figuring out what that unknown is. And to do so, we need to know atomic number and mass numbers on the left and the right. Rutherford isolated radon gas while studying alpha particle emission. And in the early 1900s, it was proposed that radioactivity was the result of the natural change of the isotope of one element into an isotope of a different element. Such processes are called nuclear reactions. In a nuclear reaction, the sum of the mass numbers of the reacting particles must equal the sum of the mass numbers of the products. And furthermore, to maintain nuclear charge balance, the sum of the atomic numbers of the products must equal the sum of the atomic numbers of the reactants. As we mentioned in our last section, in chemical reactions, only the outer electrons of the atoms are disturbed. But in nuclear reactions, the nuclear changes that occur are independent of the chemical environment of the atom. Radioactive decay is the process in which a nucleus spontaneously disintegrates, giving off radiation. A nuclear bombardment reaction is a nuclear reaction in which a nucleus is bombarded or struck by another nucleus or by a nuclear particle. There are six common types of radioactive decay. First, let's look at alpha emission or alpha decay, which is the emission of an alpha particle from an unstable nucleus. Here's an example here. I have radium-226, and it is decomposing to radon-222. Notice that it's also emitting an alpha particle. Again, that can be written as helium or as an alpha particle like this. These are the same two reactions. Note that the mass number goes down by 4, 226 to 222, and the atomic number goes down by 2, 88 to 86. The neutrons are rearranged, but they are conserved. So if I started with 226 on the left and I have 222 on the right, that means that there's a difference of 4 if I started with 88 and it went to 86, that's a difference of an atomic number of 2. That becomes that 4 over 2, my alpha particle or my helium nucleus. Next we have beta emission or beta decay, which is the emission of a beta particle from an unstable nucleus. Beta emission is equivalent to a neutron converting to a proton and an electron. Notice here that a neutron has zero protons and it has a mass of one. On the right, if I have one proton and one electron, one minus one gives me zero, and a proton we know has a mass of one, an electron does not have a mass. So one plus zero is one. Here would be an example of carbon-14 decaying to nitrogen-14. We can see here that going from 6 to 7, my neutron converting to a proton and an electron. So that converted to a proton, right? 6 plus 1 is 7, and there's my electron. Notice that my mass, I had 14 on the left, and I have 14 plus 0 is 14 on the right. Again, notice that I can write that as 0 over negative 1 with an E, or I can write it as a beta particle, 0 over negative 1, beta emission. My mass number and the atomic number both balance on both sides. We've looked at alpha emission, we've looked at beta emission, now let's look at gamma emission. Gamma emission is when we have emission from an excited nucleus of a gamma photon, and it corresponds to radiation with a wavelength of approximately 10 to the negative 12th meters. 
Technectium 99M is an example of a metastable nucleus. It is in an excited state and has a lifetime of about 10 to the negative 9th seconds. Notice that I have technectium and the mass and the atomic number do not change, but I do have energy that is a product. So mass does not change, charge does not change, but energy is released in the form of a gamma ray. Gamma radiation arises from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei, and it consists of the shortest wavelength of electromagnetic waves, which is even shorter than x-rays. And they have the highest energy of any form of electromagnetic radiation. We then have positron emission. A positron, symbolized in this manner, is a positive electron. Positrons and electrons have the same mass but opposite charge. The positron is the antimatter analog to an electron. This shows the emission of a positron particle from an unstable nucleus. Positron emission is equivalent to a proton converting to a neutron. Let's look a little closer. Here I have a proton. We know proton has a positive one charge and it has a mass of one. We can see that it converts to a neutron because my atomic number of one still needs to be the same on the right side. So if I have a neutron that's zero, then I need to have a one over here, a mass of one. We know that a neutron has a mass of one, so therefore this electron we know does not have a mass. Let's look at an example, polonium 207. Its atomic number is 84, its mass is 207. So when it decays to bismuth, 207, we can see I went from 84 to 83, so I need to have a proton down here, but yet 207, 207, it can't be a proton because a proton would have a mass of one, so it needs to have this zero up top, meaning it's a positron. To retain charge balance, positron decay results in a decrease in the atomic number. Notice I went from 84 to 83, but yet the mass stayed the same. Here's another example, going from technectium to molybdenum. My mass was 95, my mass is still 95. I went from an atomic number of 43 to 42, so this has got to be a positron with a mass of zero, but a plus one charge. We can see the decrease in atomic number going from 43 to 42, but yet the mass stays the same. We then have electron capture or K capture. This is the capture of an electron from the first or the K shell. This is the first time that we can see one of these particles as a reactant. The decay of an unstable nucleus by capture of an electron from an inner orbital of an atom. This is equivalent to a proton converting to a neutron. Let's look. Beryllium-7. So I have four, but it's turning into, it's decaying to lithium seven. So that four converting to three. So I have a proton converting to a neutron. Four minus one is three. And we know electrons have no mass. So that seven, mass of seven for beryllium stays seven for lithium. Let's look at potassium that undergoes electron capture. 19 minus 1 is 18, and the atomic number 18 corresponds with argon, and its mass of 40 stays the same. So the mass number is unchanged, and the atomic number is reduced by 1. Most unstable nuclei decay by one of four paths, alpha decay or beta decay, positron emission, or electron capture. Gamma radiation often accompanies these processes. But there is another way that nuclei can decompose, fission. Fission is the spontaneous decay of an unstable nucleus where a heavy nucleus that has a mass number greater than 89 splits into lighter nuclei and energy is released. Let's look at uranium-236. That's a heavy nucleus and it splits into yttrium and iodine in this case. If I were to add together both of those nuclei protons, 39 plus 53, it would add up to 92. But if I added up the masses of both of those, I would get 232. That means I need four neutrons 
to balance out that mass. I've got a bunch of practice for you. Pause the video here to find out what this unknown particle of this nuclear reaction is. It must be a beta particle because if I have 92 on the left, I need 92 on the right. And right now I've got 93, so I need a negative one. And my mass is the same, so therefore the mass needs to be zero. That's gotta either be electron or beta, same thing. What is this unknown particle? It's gotta be an alpha particle or the helium nucleus. 92 on the left, and this is 90, so I need an atomic number of two here. 235 and this is 231 so I need a mass of 4. Pause the video here for this one. It must be a positron, right? 84, this is 83 so I need one more on the right. So one would be the bottom number here and 207 and 207 would be a mass of 0. We know that, that would be a positron. We can write that as this beta particle or electron. We know it's a positive electron, no mass. Here's an electron capture. Can you figure out what new nucleus is produced? It's got to be potassium, K, because 20 minus 1 would be 19, and 41 plus 0 is 41. So look at the periodic table, and K has an atomic number of 19. Here's a beta decay. We know that it has a negative one charge, zero, so B, or that might be an E. What new nucleus is produced from that reaction? It must be magnesium because 12 minus one is equal to 11, and 22 is on the left, so zero plus 22 would be 22. Pause here to solve for these equations. How did you do? For the first one, did you get Chlorine with the mass of 37, that's an electron capture since it's in the reactants. For letter B, it would be a positron, would be my second unknown here, because 11 plus 0 would give me carbon 11, and 5 plus 1 would give me that 6 on the left. That would be a positron. For letter C, it would be a beta emission because I need my proton count to equal 16, and here I have 17, so I need a minus 1, and my mass to be 35, which it already is, so I need a negative 1 and a 0. That would be beta. And for letter D, it's showing me that it's a positron, so 14 plus 1 would be 15, and I need my mass number to be 30 since this is 0. Pause here to solve for these four and check your answers. To help you with some of those symbols for some of those particles, here is a little guide if you want to write those down if you didn't already. And the next part in this section is looking at radioactive decay. This is when we have a sequence in which one radioactive nucleus decays to a second, which then decays to a third, and so forth, until a stable nucleus is formed. Three radioactive decay series are found naturally, uranium-238, uranium-235, and thorium-232. This just shows the first four steps of uranium-238's decay. We can see here that my first decay is alpha, and then my second and my third are beta, and then the fourth is alpha. And we can see that it all aligns. If I have 238 as my mass, 234 plus 4 from that alpha is 238. I started with uranium-92, it decayed to thorium, so I need to have that alpha 2 here. Then I'm starting with that thorium. We can see a beta decay, my mass stays the same. My atomic number increased by one. Then I start with that Pa. We can see that the mass goes down by zero and atomic number increases because of that beta. And then for step four, I start with that uranium. My mass goes down by four. My atomic number goes down by two. And this continues for all of these steps until I have a stable lead Isotope. Let's look at another uranium radioactive decay. It begins with uranium-235 and ends with lead-207. How many alpha and beta particles are emitted in this series? Well, let's look at the difference in mass. 235 minus 207 gives us a mass difference of 28. Well, each alpha particle has a mass of 4. So 4 times 7 would give me a mass difference of 28. But for every alpha particle, the atomic number would decrease by two, right? 
if I had uranium 92 and one alpha particle emission, that would take its atomic number down to 90. If I had seven alpha particles, that would reduce its atomic number by 14. So 92 minus 14 would mean that it has an atomic number of 78, but it doesn't. The actual decrease went from 92 to 82 was only 10 atomic units, not 14. So that difference between 14 and 10 would be that there's four beta particles. Remember, each beta particle is a negative one emission. That would make up for the difference in four protons. So four beta particles and seven alpha particles. First three steps of this series goes alpha, then beta, then alpha. Can you write those three out? The first one we were told is alpha, then beta, then alpha, and we started with uranium-235. If the first one is alpha, that means on the right this must be 231, and that alpha, that 2, so 92 minus 2 would be 90. We would need to look at the periodic table and see that that is thorium. That is then our starting point for step 2. The beta, we were told, is step 2, so negative 1 plus must be 91. Look on the periodic table, we see that that's Pa the mass stays the same. That then becomes our starting point for step three. And we were told that it is alpha. So 92 minus two is 89. We would look at the periodic table and see that that is AC. And the mass decreased by four because it's alpha. Pause the video here to try to answer these two questions. So we started with thorium 232 and I looked at the periodic table. Thorium's atomic number is 90. If we undergo six alpha decay, so I did six times four, which would be a mass of 24 difference, and six times two would be 12 atomic number difference. So 232 minus 24 would give me a final product mass of 208, and 90 minus 12 would be 78. That's from the six alphas. Then we had four beta particles, four beta particles. Each beta particle does not change the mass, but it increases the atomic number by one. So that would increase it by four. So 78 plus four would give me an atomic number of 82. The atomic number of 82 is Pb lead. So the final product would be Pb, atomic number 82, mass of 208. And the first three steps of thorium-232 decay is alpha, then beta, then beta. So alpha, beta, beta, our thorium, 98, it's got to lose two protons, so that would be 88 Ra. That becomes our starting point for step two. Beta means we increase our atomic number by one, but the mass stays the same. Then that becomes the beginning of step three. Increase the atomic number one more time, and the mass stays the same.